is I Do Damage, and welcome back to the channel. In this last Epoch video, I want to talk about the Fire Mage endgame build. That's right, I'm finally doing a follow-up to that Mage starter build we posted a few months back. Which is still viable, the card's up top, if you do want to go back and check that out, for how to kind of get through the game early on. This build's going to be geared towards endgame, timelines, and arena, and it's a hell of a lot of fun. My goal with the build starting out was to make Volcanic Orb viable, fun, and powerful, and we pulled it off, dudes. <laughs> Before we start, I want to say thank you to all the subscribers, new and old, and all the Damage Crew community. You all are awesome, and you guys make my day great. Let's go ahead and talk Fire Mage Last Epoch. First thing I want to talk about with this build is what makes the build so cool, fun, and interesting. And that's two skills right here. You have Black Hole, which sucks enemies in, and your Volcanic Orb, which then all the enemies that are being sucked in are just getting mutilated by your fireballs. It actually adds up for a lot of destruction. There you go. I don't know what to name this build. I couldn't really think of anything, so I, hey, I went with Fire Mage. I thought like maybe Volcanic Orb Mage, or like I even thought like Pinpoint Mage, since you're really dealing damage in that really tight area. But anyway, hey, maybe you guys can help me name it. What about that? So let's go ahead and start, shall we? The skills we're going to use, and you're going to want to specialize into these, probably into Flame Ward first, and then Volcanic Orb, and then Focus, and then Teleport, and then Black Hole. That's probably the order I would recommend, but hey, you can do it whatever you want. By the time you're in the end game, you can do whatever you want anyway. So we're just going to start out in the order I have them set up, and that is Teleport. The point in Teleport is for mobility, and also with this build, you want a lot of ward. So to do that, obviously, we spec into ward on Teleport, right? So ward gain on Teleport. When you Teleport, you lose a bit of health, but then that goes into ward. You also gain ward retention if you've recently teleported. Recently is the past four seconds. And then also, I think this one might be bugged. I don't know if it is or not, but the way it reads is that when you teleport, you're granted ward equal to your intelligence stat. You can see my intelligence stat is actually 20. When I teleport, I get like 150. So I don't know what's up with that, but hey, it's there. <laughs> and I'm using it. I, maybe it's a bug. Maybe they'll fix it because they see this video. Who knows? And then the other thing we want is, because four seconds really isn't too long on that retention buff, so I wanted to make it last longer so we come over here and increase that duration so we don't have to teleport literally every cooldown, and it feels pretty nice. This is what I did with my teleport skill. I did try out mirror images and just was not very impressed with it, if I'm being honest. The mirror images are stationary, and, you know, I just didn't see them really doing much. So I really went the ward route for that survivability. Speaking of survivability, that'll bring us to our next skill, Flame Ward. Flame Ward is one of the newer mage skills, and basically what it is is when you pop it, you're going to get a boost of ward energy shield. It's called Ward in Last Epoch. And you're also going to take less damage. And another thing you're going to notice, and I noticed this, was my protections. Watch when I pop this skill. They actually lower down and what's actually happening here, so my elemental ones go up, but you may notice if you're not specced into that when you first get the skill, that these are actually all lower when you use your flame ward. And the reason for that, the reason it's not right now is because I'm specced into elemental protections, but when you first get the skill, you'll notice this, because I know I did, and I thought it was a bug. But what's actually happening is ward counts as your life. So the way that the math works on that is it's tweaking it based on your max life and the effective protections so you're not actually you still have the same amount it just is kind of a mathematical thing that makes it look like a bug basically is what it is but anyway enough about that i know i kind of got off topic here let's talk about the flame ward skill tree shall we basically what you want to do is you want to be able to get as much ward and also take less damage with the skill this is all about survival there's other options you can do if maybe you just don't die and maybe you're you're better than me at the game, which you probably are, and you don't stand in AoEs. You could come up here and get some retaliation damage and things like that, but hey, I'm not very good at moving out of bad, so, <laughs> you know, I gotta take all the ward and help me as I can get. So that's what I did here. I went to get more ward when you use the skill. You take less damage. Also, 
This is where your last points will go. I only went three out of five here for the elemental protections. That's why they were going up in that menu I'm showing. And then also you have ward per second while the skill lasts. And then also the ward lasts longer and mana efficiency with the skill will help as well. So you can get out more damage, volcanic orbs, and so on. So that's two skills out of five. Let's move on here to volcanic orb. By far my favorite mage skill in the game is <laughs> volcanic orb. It's so flashy and fun to play with. To be honest, man, leveling up the mage initially, I thought it was kind of a drag, but once I got that volcanic orb, I was just in and thought it was a blast. So as far as volcanic orb goes, there's a few things you want. You want it to do a shit ton of damage and have a really short cooldown. And you also want to balance the mana efficiency which I'll talk about here real quick, but that's what we're going to do in the skill tree. So the kind of the trick here with Volcanic Orb is you want to keep the cost above 40. And that's because the passive skill tree that we'll get into a little bit later, you actually gain ward if you cast a skill that costs more than 40 mana. So as you're leveling up and min-maxing this skill, you're going to want to keep an eye on that because there's a mana efficiency node that you're going to have to take or maybe take some points out of if it's below 40 mana cost. So just kind of pay attention to that, but this is how my skill tree looks. We come up here obviously for the CDR, the cooldown reduction, and this is just so we can get more of those volcanic orbs out and stack them up and do hella damage. Then we come up here and take the hit damage. The shrapnel at the end is disabled, not all the shrapnel is at the end when the orb blows up. But to compensate for that, we come down here and pick up explosive ground, and this is what you're going to see blowing up on the ground around it, okay, all those little mini bombs. Pretty cool. And you know, you can stack up multiple of them as well, so there's even more. It's pretty freaking wild. <laughs> but yeah, there's that. And then I also went down here for hit damage, and this was just to get to that mana efficiency node I was just talking about. So you may notice that it's too efficient, then you need to take a point out and kind of tweak it a little bit, but that's, uh, that's that. And then this was the very last point I actually took, and this was just to make it move slower and the explosive ground frequency as well. So that's Volcanic Orb and the skill tree. Let's move on to skill 4 out of 5, shall we? This is Focus. This is going to be how you get your mana back quickly. So there's two options with this skill that I'm going to tell you about, okay? And I've tried both, and I'll kind of share my thoughts. But the way I'm playing it right now is I come down here for the mana overcharge, which basically you can see right here I have 165 mana. I can actually charge it up, overcharging it so I have more mana. And then that decays back down over time. Super cool skill. So that's what I have right now. Elemental protections, really it's just for the overcharge. And then I also came up here for survivability to get ward. Armor and protections, ward retention. And it seems like mind shield, it does work, but it's not super, super useful. Like here, let's do a little test run for you. Okay, so now we're channeling, and all the health that we get back, watch our ward, it should go up a little bit when I stop channeling, okay? So you can see it did go up a little bit there, so, you know, it's probably better than uh, than before. This is what I tried before was this over here, so these two nodes, Null Profusion and Null Infusion, basically what they do is when you're at negative mana, you instantly get back mana equal to your maximum mana amount, but it adds a cooldown to focus, which you either may or may not like. But if you want to get back mana super freaking quick and you're, like I said, better than me at the game and don't need all the ward, I would definitely recommend coming over here because <laughs> literally like you can count to two and you're back at full mana and overcharged. So that's another option is just take your points out of these and just swap them over here for, uh, for quicker mana regain. And then max out your overcharge as well. Totally a viable option. I tried it and, um, you know, I'm pretty 50 50 on it really. But I do favor the ward overall just because uh, I can play more stupid. So, and that's the honest truth. <laughs> and the last and arguably the most important skill for this build to function correctly is Black Hole. And this does exactly what you'd think is it's a pull in AoE. This one you're going to find later on. You got to be a level 30 sorcerer for this one. But when you get this, it's pretty crazy. And, you know, I was rocking Meteor before this because I thought Meteor looked cool and we were streaming. And one of our amazing viewers pointed out, dude, you can do Black Hole and suck in all the monsters into your 
volcanic ore because I want to take a step back here and just explain this to you a little bit. So when you first get volcanic orb, it's going to move pretty damn quickly and it won't be stationary like mine is. Mine's stationary because I found these idols that slow down the orb's movement speed. So there you go, that's the secret to the build. When you first get this though, that orb's gonna move pretty fast and it's gonna go pretty far. But yeah, we've, we've tweaked it a lot <laughs> so that it doesn't act like that. But once we got it to be stationary, the black hole just made sense, right? Last thing I say about it is I was going meteor, so I would drop down the meteor and during its wind up time be casting orb through it. And then when it would finally impact, it would all just be this big damage. But yeah, we've made tweaks to the build since then. So there you go. This is deep, deep end game build like we were talking about. So black hole, the things you want out of this is you want cooldown reduction, cost reduction, full strength and size. And that's pretty much it. So that's what we're going for here. You've got pull strength, the area of the AOE that pulls. Also, you can make the orb last longer. And last but not least, I'm getting time dilation. Basically when black hole expires, it has a chance to cast another one that is weaker, which is actually <laughs> this cascade fracture. So there you go. It's only a 30% chance, but hey, it can happen. And, you know, I don't know where I'll put the rest of the points, if I'm being totally honest. I mean, there's some cooldown, but less damage. Blind. I don't know. Maybe I'll just go damage, dude. I don't know. But basically, you're just in it for uh, size, pull strength, duration, echo chance. Or not echo, but recap, whatever you want to call it. And then, yeah, there you go. If anyone has any uh, really great ideas, oh, dude, just damage. I mean, that's probably the best, honestly, but... Yeah, let me know. I definitely wouldn't go down here because I, I don't want less pull strength. Here's one where you can get it to where it's uh, seeking. Anyway, yeah, I just recently switched over to Black Hole, so that's what I'm rolling right now, and I really enjoy it. So anyway, let me know down in the comments if there's more nodes that I should take or what you think on that. So that's going to be it for skills for your Volcanic War Black Hole fun fun. Now let's go ahead and talk about passives. When you first start out you're going to be a mage as a base class. I would definitely go into intelligence. It's going to be one of your main stats for this build. After that I would go every three seconds your skill does 200% more damage. This one you could probably debate a little bit. It may not be the best but hey I took it because I thought it sounded cool. And you're definitely going to want Ward retention. In all honesty, I'd probably put five points here, one point here, four points into preparation instead of the full 10. And then I would come up here to your ward retention to polish it off for level 20. And then by that point, you can unlock your mastery and come over here to sorcerer. And again, this is what I've what I've done, and I'll make some comments on things I potentially would have changed. Brainstorm is going to give you more spell damage. You obviously need that for, for your build. Increased critical strike chance, which you do want. The crit chance is still, uh, it's pretty decent, 20%. I'd like to get it up a lot higher, but hey, better than zero, right? And then after that, I focus on all fire. We're doing all like fire. And, and originally I wanted to do an ignite type of build, but I just haven't been able to pull that off quite yet. My ignite chance is only 39. I'd like to get it over 100 so that I can get more stacks, but... Hey, it's more of a direct damage build than an ignite build at this point. So we went into Pyromancer for that fire damage. And then we came up here to your skill that I talked about earlier. I almost missed right over it, dudes. It is Lost Knowledge. You gain ward whenever you use any skill that costs at least 40 mana. So that's going to be your volcanic orb that you're spamming. And so that's going to give you tons of ward. Here you go. You can kind of see the ward just ticking up right here. And then if you're teleporting as well, you're going to have more retention. So that ward will stay longer as well. But I mean, there you go. You can see why that's good. So back to the passives. Once you've got lost knowledge maxed out, that's when you'll have black hole unlocked by then at least. I'm kind of experimenting with this insight ability. Basically what it does is you have a chance on hit to get the ignite buff. And pretty much what it does is it gives you more elemental and more ward retention. I thought it sounded pretty sweet, but I'm really excited to put more points into this dragon mage node here. Basically what it does is increases fire damage on recent cold skill. 
which black hole counts as a cold skill. Basically the way it'll work is you open with black hole and then spam your volcanic orb. So you can see how that synergizes right there. And recent is four seconds, so it's a four second buff. And you can put 10 points into that for 100% damage increase on your fire skills. You know, you can even get more adaptive spell damage and then it's tripled if you have over 200 max mana. It's another one that I'm thinking about putting points into. And we obviously want recovery speed because Black Hole does have quite a long cooldown. And if you want to, if you want to be clever, you can come in here and get some elemental damage off the Spellblade tree. And that'll, uh, that'll increase your fire damage right there as well. But yeah, that's, uh, that's what I've done with mine. I'm currently level 57, so I'm not super high level at all. But I really wanted to make this build because once I found these idols, dude, it just like it felt like the build just ascended to the next level. These idols are required for the build. And that kind of brings us to our next point here, items, uniques, and stat priority. And idols we've already talked about. <laughs> Obviously, you want to try to get four of these guys right here. I mean, it's just insane, dude. And they can roll up to 50% fire damage and then 55% of your volcanic orb speed reduction in damage so uh, that's pretty insane and if you got four of those me that's crazy uh, another unique that I use is calamity this is going to increase your fire damage and your ignite chance with fire skills that's not actually shown on our character sheet here because this is just overall ignite chance, whereas this is specifically for fire skills. So that's why it's not on the character sheet. Last but not least, you when you kill an enemy with a fire skill, you take four fire damage over time. This was in the starter build guide video as well. Whatever. And I have this unique soul fire. I don't think that this is really required, but I do have it on there because I think it looks cool. <laughs> and uh, the ignite chance can't be horrible. You can probably craft a better offhand, obviously. And that'll bring us to the next topic, and that is stat priority. Basically, with every build in Last Epoch, you really want to make sure you don't die. And to do that, before I even talk about damage stats and all that, I want to point out that you want to aim for at least 40 to 50% minimum. And I'm talking percent, not the number here, on all of your protections, resistances, whatever you want to call it. I would aim for at least 70% armor and at least 100% glancing blow. So with that in mind, I'm going to talk about the damage stats and I'll leave the balancing up to you. So when it comes to getting damage out of the best stats on your gear, you just want to look at your skills and the words in blue are the tags that you're going to, want to look for on gear. So obviously you're going to want fire damage, spell damage, intelligence, even elemental damage would also give you fire damage as well. Those are going to be your top gear damage stats. You also want to aim for some crit chance, crit damage, and like I said, all your protections, glancing blow, armors, and protections as well. I can show you a few of my items and kind of just comment on them if that would help. So this one has glancing blow, potion find, health regen. The health regen is not very good. A little protection is decent. I'd like to get it higher. This one has vitality, and vitality is actually pretty nice because that does give you your undead resist. That's what I like to call it. That's your void necrotic poison. Undead resistance is actually not a thing in game yet, but I think it should be. That's that's a topic for a different day. But well, Vitality gives you 15 Void, Necrotic, and Poison Protection per point. So you do want Vitality on some of your gear for that. And then we also went Attunement, which does give you five of each element just as well. Basically, these gloves suck, but the Glancing Blow is nice. And last but not least, I'll just comment on the weapon here. The weapon, you do want to focus on the adaptive spell damage number. That's going to be a big portion of your damage. I've gone sword and board here just for the survival aspect of it alone. Yeah, you can do a two-hander and get risky and get even more adaptive if you want. You obviously want your spell crit chance, fire damage, chance to ignite. I, I could probably get rid of that for something else, elemental damage or something. I'm not really sure. And then you want to get max mana. Because if you can get your max mana up to that 200 mark, you can benefit, if you remember, from that passive at the very top of our skill tree. So that's pretty much it. That's my gear. That's the, that's how I prioritize stats for this build. And uh, yeah, you can see I have a lot more to do with my gear, but hey, there it is. I've even got strength on one of those, which I guess gives me armor, but yeah. We already talked about idols. Last but not least, let's talk about gameplay. You may have seen a little bit during the video playing in the background, 
but I would like to go through and just kind of comment on some gameplay and kind of the rotation that you should. So basically, when you're just kind of running around in between mobs or whatever it is, you want to make sure you teleport and have your flame ward pretty much every cooldown. And then this is your damage. You just black hole them and you just volcanic orb. GG, man. That's all it is. All it freaking is. You're going to teleport and flame ward. That's just to keep your ward points up so you're not getting one shot. You know, if you get into trouble and the mobs maybe aren't dying as quick as, as you would like, you can just kite around and wait for that teleport cooldown and flame ward cooldown as well. And then if you're totally out of mana, hit that focus up. Make sure you just balance your wards and teleport and flame wards. And shit, I almost died there. <laughs> I forgot to focus, but hey. Happens, right? So anyway, there you go, man. Of course, it gives me a Wingari Beastmaster when I'm trying to, uh, you know, record footage. But hey, enjoy it. It's the reality of the game, right? There you go. Black Colm and Orb. The G G's. Freaking fun. Dude. There you go. Black Hole Orb G G. It just makes quick work of everything. Anyway, I'll go ahead and uh, shut up and just play some gameplay for about 30 seconds or so with some music. You can chill out and see if this is something you want to try out sometime or what. I hope the build guide was useful to you. I know that I had fun making it. And if you enjoy the content, don't forget to like and subscribe and share with everyone you know. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. I cannot do that. I cannot do that. 